hey 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 you guys so we are back with story times um so i gave you guys a little snippet so i gave you guys a little snippet of a story i've been thinking about for a while here and um it is called we sorry for the a bus went by so i do apologize um it is called weeping angels okay real quick though before i get started into the story um shout out to youtuber excuse me to um fellow subscriber the voice she's like honey just make sure that you protect your work and you're absolutely right um even though i cannot necessarily um copyright an idea i can definitely copyright an idea of my short stories is basically what they are essentially so i am going to be in the process of doing that before the summer definitely do that so you guys this is called weeping angels let me give you all a little bit of background so this is set in the mid to late 70s and it surrounds a family of um of sisters so we have the baker family they were originally from north carolina but they moved to chicago okay let's make this the year of 70, 78 that sounds like a good year 78 1978 in chicago they live in a brownstone the baker family they have four girls yes all girls and i have their names here flowers the name of flowers we have willow who is the oldest let me give you a bit brief description of each girl before we move into the parents willow is the oldest at 22 years old willow is shy she's quiet she's cute she's okay uh she's a chocolate sister all the all the daughters are chocolate okay next up we have violet violet is absolutely stunning when she walks into a room heads turn she's 20 years old um violet is also engaged to be married to her high school sweetheart and then lastly we have the twins girl they are 12 year old twins there's a big age gap there but they were a little bit of a surprise we have jasmine and rose they are twins they are extremely intelligent girls they are also chess players they've been playing chess since they were 10 years old so they, they've gotten pretty good at it all right the families um or the, the parents own a local neighborhood shop you know your your neighborhood little store corner store basically um Wynette is the mother's name and I've been thinking about the father Anthony Anthony they call him Tony <laughs> yes Tony um and these parents are young girl because back then people were having kids when they were when they were kids you know so let's put them let's say 23 24 year difference so the father is 43 let's put the mom real young the mom is 40. yeah the mom is 40 years old um they moved from north, north carolina when the twins were toddlers by the way okay so the oldest girls were born in north carolina but they've adjusted because it's been a while okay the twins are now 12 years old so everything is going well oh by the way they live in a, in a brownstone and there are other characters in this building it is owned by an older jewish couple you have the weinsteins good no that's that's so jewish um <laughs> gold the goldbergs girl that's even more jewish typical jewish name but this this people they're in their 70s um and the wife is very very sweet now miss wynette baker tries to tell the girls to stay away from the from the wife because rumor is she's a clairvoyant and she does run run a little business out of their apartment apartment excuse me where she does read people's palm but the bakers are devout christians and they have taught their children and they're like you do not go up there to that woman even though they're nice you don't go up there you're not going to dabble into that darkness is what they try to tell the girls um who's else in the house we have a single a single mom that she has two kids and excuse me the brownstone we have a single mom she has two kids um and then we have a uh, another family with with some kids okay but then the bottom the bottom which is the basement is for rent but rumor is somebody is moving in so that's where this is you know the story is going you guys the person is actually moving in yes girl he's gonna be fine too not paul fine but <laughs> but he's still gonna be fine um so let's go into the characters you guys oh by the way as far as background goes like i said the parents own a shop 
um willow being the oldest that's what she does she did not she, she's not going to college so willow wanted to be a nurse but things got so busy at the store that she put aside her dreams of going to nursing school and decided to help her parents out in the shop so she works at the shop you guys every day now the mom um they've gotten to, to some depth uh due to the father girl yes and so he had made some um not so smart <laughs> he had made some not so smart decisions back in north carolina and they owe people so um the mom actually has a night job she cleans hotels at night and the father works in the daytime of course along with willow at the shop so all three of them work at the shop um the girls are in school the young girls are in school now ironically violet i was looking down at the notes violet goes to nursing school so the inside tea is that even though violet is extremely beautiful she's insecure because she ain't that smart so she tends to copy willow um and violet really doesn't want to be a nurse but since willow wanted to be a nurse why not okay so that's how that's how that goes you know what i mean so a little bit of rivalry a little bit of tension between those two sisters to you guys so anyway just wanted to give that background so this is the weekend where uh, it's a saturday morning and this is early summer let's make this june okay june in chicago early summer 1978 this is a saturday morning and they see a moving truck coming up and so the girls are peeping down you know they live on the second floor no 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 yeah they live on the second floor the family <laughs> on the second floor so they're peering down to see the moving truck and so this these are the twins you know girl what are the twins name again lily and violet no, no no lily and jasmine oh hell girl so these are the twins girl jasmine and rose you know hey um hey jasmine look the movers are here so jasmine and rose are looking down at the busy street and they can see a moving truck coming in and so um the mama goes walks by the the window why not she's like i want to you know why would you need a moving truck if there's only a one bedroom down there i thought and so rose said no mom it's two bedrooms it's two bedrooms down there and why not kind of rolls her eyes and she's like well i'll say and why not walks back to the kitchen to start getting lunch ready all right so the girls are still uh staring down and that's when willow comes by and she's like hey um do y'all see who it is yet and so the twins like they shake their heads no at the same time and so willow thinks to herself they're doing that creepy twin thing <laughs> that creepy t twin thing again where they do things in sync they say words they finish each other words girl yeah so anyway the twins are sitting there most of the morning just looking and no peep on the new person that has supposedly is moving in so the mother goes ahead and gets lunch ready willow helps her and um apparently the other sister what's her name y'all i gotta get these sisters names child i should maybe i should have just made only two jasmine no no so the other sister violet is apparently over the parents of her fiance's house she's over there having lunch with them so it's just gonna be the twins and um and willow and her parents you know just having a quick lunch nothing nothing about it so this is why Nat. she's like well did y'all see who moved in here and willow's like no apparently the twins been you know watching all morning at the windows and no one's moved in and so the um husband comes in yeah what's the husband's name tony comes in and he's like yeah maybe he'll come in later on you know it's getting kind of warm so uh if the brother ain't moved in yet then you know maybe he'll move in the next day so all right you guys everything goes okay they have you know lunch and um they had just came back from the shop because saturdays are their biggest day so they just closed the shop down just for a quick quick bite to eat and then we're back to the shop to work uh, the shop stays open until 9 p.m okay y'all so the next morning the shop is still open you know now why Ned doesn't work down at the shop because she doesn't believe in working on the lord's day but willow and her father does keep the shop going every day basically so apparently the mystery man moved in overnight okay saturday night he moved in and so willow was like that's kind of odd who chooses to move into their apartment at night all right you guys so sorry about that i had to pause in the middle 
Um, so this is the next day. I'm continuing with the first part of Weeping Angels. So I guess the mystery man has moved in overnight. But what we're going to do is back up a little bit. It's in the middle of the night. Jasmine Fasttail actually spent the night over her fiance's house and she used the cover that she was going to be having dinner with the parents but honey she wanted to just spend the night with her fiance now her parents are very traditional so she sneaks in the next morning her and willow the eldest daughter they share a room and the twins share a room right so here's Jasmine sneaking in. So here's Jasmine sneaking in. She makes her way into the room that her and Willow share as she starts to take off her her clothes from the night before and put on her pajamas to make it seem like she's been in bed all night. Willow, you know, she rustles around and she turns on the lamp. She turns on a lamp and she looks up <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine she's like well it's good to know you finally decided to come home so Violet kind of rolls her eyes at her she's like look Willow not everybody can be like you just stuck up here like an old maid with no man and Willow's like well considering all these girls being um showing up missing it's too dangerous um Violet for you to be out late like this and so Violet's like I understand I know but guess what and Willow's like what she's like it looks like that man moved in downstairs so that really piqued Willow's interest she's like what do you mean he moved in downstairs what do you mean the man moved in downstairs the twins were watching all day and no one moved in uh, Violet cut her off. She's like, well, the lights are on downstairs. So that tells me that somebody has already moved in. So Willow looked at her, turns over to her side, turns off the lamp and goes to bed. Next morning, Willow makes her way to the neighborhood shop. Her, um, everyone's there at the shop, meaning both her parents are there. The twins are off at school and, um, Violet is at nursing, her nursing classes, right? So she's busy, you know, checking out the person in front of her and she notices a man walking around. <laughs> which is pacing back and forth and he finally w reaches into one of the coolers and grabs, uh, ice water, or chilled water and he comes up. And he gets ready to pay for his food. And Willow is blown away. This man is absolutely breathtakingly handsome. Now, y'all, this brother looks like... I try to find someone that y'all can compare them to. This brother looks like Brian White. Brian White is the actor that played in Stump the Yard. Oh, y'all, sorry. That made it worse, honey. Brian White is the actor that played in Stump the Yard. Yes, yes. Looks like that. Very nice, right? So anyway, um, he comes in up uh, finally to pay for his uh, water. So normally Willow wouldn't make conversation with people because she's a little shy. She just wants them in and out, right? But she decides to say something because, again, this brother's handsome. So she gives him his change. She's like, well, here's your change. But by the way, I've never seen you before. Are you new to this neighborhood? And that's when he, he was on his way out the door and he kind of turns around he's like actually yeah i moved in what time is it this bus is late picking up these kids <laughs> so he turned around and walks back up to the cashier he's like actually yes i just moved in um a couple of nights ago and willow thought that was kind of odd because the person who moved in supposed to be moved in last night right so he's like, yeah, I actually moved in a couple of nights ago over at the Brownstone on, girl, I don't know, 94th and, and Central. And she's like, really? My family lives in that Brownstone. And he's like, he looks at her, he's like, the Flower Girls? And she kind of rolls her eyes. She's like, yes the flower girls and so he's like so which one are you <laughs> and so that's when willow introduces herself she's like well my name is willow and i'm the eldest um of the sisters of the flower girls as you say and then my sister is after me violet and then we have twins jasmine and rose and he kind of smiled he's like wow flower girls he's like wow four girls all flower names that's why you call the flower girls she's like yep that's why we're called the flower girls so he's like well i gotta run off but it was nice to meet you by the way he's like i'm sorry my name is michael and she's like okay nice to meet you too so he walks out and Willow's like, oh my God, I cannot wait to get home, you know, uh, and tell Violet about this man and how handsome he is, right? So, Willow is just, in, Willow is a daydreamer, y'all. So, throughout the, 
I'm about to choke someone. So throughout the entire, you know, day, she's just thinking about this man and how he just moved in and how handsome he is. And, well, you know, she's going to share it with Violet. Um, and her, her daddy notices that Willow is in this phase. And he's like, Willow, you okay? This is Tony, girl. Tony, the daddy. He's like, Willow. What are you doing? She's like, nothing, daddy. I'm, I'm sorry. He's like, and he looks at her. He's like, you've been acting weird all day. Why don't you go ahead and take off? I can do this by myself if you ain't. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and take off? I can work, you know, this last few, few hours by myself if you ain't going to get it together. She's like, no, daddy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because, child, she's been dropping stuff, dropping ice on the ground, <laughs> giving people the wrong change. Because she's just mesmerized about this man. You know, like I said, she, she often finds herself daydreaming or whatever. So... The shop closes up at 9 p.m. She goes into the room that her and Violet shares and she sees that Violet is not home again. And she's like, I can't keep doing this. I can't keep covering for her. Cause you guys, what happens is that Willow will cover for Violet when she stays out all night. The parents have been telling them, even though they're grown, but you still under my roof. So you're gonna have to listen to my rules that you need to be home by a certain time, especially since these, especially since these young girls have been coming up missing and they don't know what's happening, right? So Violet is still out. Um, Willow decides to stay up. All the, the girls have gone to bed. The twins have gone to bed. The daddy's gone to bed. Mom is, is on the bed. So Willow decides to stay up and she's in the living room watching TV. That's when she hears the front door open and she turns around. Of course, it's Violet sneaking in again. And so Willow, you know, whispered to her. She's like, Violet, is that you? And Violet's like, yes, Willow, it's me. So what are you doing up so late? She's like, I'm waiting on you to come. You know, you know, with these girls showing up missing, I'm just worried. And Violet's like, you don't have any reason to be worried about me because this is what I got. And so Willow said, what do you mean? So Violet sits down onto the love seat next to her and she rummages into her purse and pulls out a knife. And Willow's like, where did you get that from? She said, Gerald told me I should have it. Gerald is her, the name of fiance. And Willow's like, I don't know about that, Violet. I mean, I feel like you shouldn't really have to, you know, have a knife just to walk home. And Violet's like, look, Willow, we never know what's happening. And the cops still don't know what happened to those girls that showed up missing. Y'all, so far, there have been two girls that have shown up missing in their neighborhood within the last month. Again, they're presumed dead, no bodies, nothing. The parents haven't heard anything. There hasn't been any, you know, kidnappers calling. Because these were working middle class people. It's not like they have a lot of money anyway. So, Violet has this knife. Again, that her fiancé, Joel, gave to her. So, uh, she's like, well, I just need, I just feel better having it. And Joel said he'll feel better with me. And so, Willow's like, well, if he was really that concerned, he will walk you home and make sure you got home safe. Excuse me, she goes ahead and goes to bed. And Willow decides to stay up a little bit later, y'all, watching, watching TV. And she ends up falling asleep on the couch. But then Willow has this dream. And the dream has Michael, the guy from downstairs. And so, y'all, she's in this dream. She's, um... <laughs> So in the dream, she's working in a shop and all of a sudden, um, whatever she's carrying, I don't know, girl, like a box of uh, chips or something falls on the ground and Michael comes over and he helps her to arrange the chips in the box and he helps her to get up and that's when he gets closer to her and he starts to kiss her. Child, that's when Willow wakes up. She wakes up from the dream. She looks down and sees that it's morning time and she can hear her her mama Wynette in the um, kitchen getting breakfast together. And so her mama turns around. She's like, Willow, did you sleep on the couch all, all night? And she's like, yeah, mama, I was just tired. She's like, well, yeah, your daddy told me um, that you were acting funny at the shop yesterday. And Willow, she looked at, you know, her mama. She's like, you know how daddy is, mama. It, it was okay. It was nothing. So, child, Willow decides to go ahead and get ready for the day um, again. Violet goes ahead and go off to school. Then that's when they hear a knock at the door. So Wynette, the mother, she's like, Willow, go ahead and get that while I finish up these eggs. So Willow goes ahead and she goes to the front door. And without even looking in the people, she opens it up. And guess who should be standing there? It's the young, handsome, new, mysterious neighbor, Mr. Michael. All right, you guys, that's it for part one.